Hey guys, so pardon the voice. Allergies are getting really bad. Um, <clears throat> hence why you're seeing a little bit um, less of my videos and stuff lately from this week because everything's in bloom. I think I'm gonna have to turn to allergy shots soon. Not good. Anyways, so if you can hear me, just be patient. But um, something I wanted to show you real quick. So while I'm shopping and I'm looking for really good steals and deals, um, if I find something that's like three or four dollars or like just an amazing price point, I'll buy it because I, I do know how to sew. So this is so this is my amazing sewing machine that my amazing husband gifted me. Um, last year for my birthday. Um, it's something that my poppy taught me as, um, it was one of his talents and, um, growing up in the furniture industry and my nanny and poppy made custom furniture, upholstery, uh, pillows. They owned a company called the Pillow Factory. I grew up around sewing machines. So, uh, to some people, it might be scary. To me, it's my comfort zone. I know how to maneuver around a sewing machine. Um, it's a very simple task to um, use to really create your own creations, I guess. Um, but anyways, so I found this top for my mom at Marshall's. It was on clearance for like, I don't know, like six bucks. So she's visiting and she tried it on and I, and she was like oh it, i could probably use a size smaller and i was like for six dollars <clears throat> well i'll just take it in so anyway I need, I need to make euro shams for my master bedroom anyway so i bought some yardage at um walmart which is like two yards for four dollars and so i was like you know i'll whip out the sewing machine and we'll just rip the shirt down and we'll just Keep on moving to the uh, Euro shams that I'm about to create. So I wanted to give you some insight as to what we do, whether we are not um, feeling 100% up to par. Um, we're always doing something around here. I can't even, I cannot wait to show you what has been going on downstairs, although it's not part of the, well, some of it's DIY, but the painting, we have our painter that we hired um, about two years ago. Um, which I will try and get his information as well. But it's just a local guy from Hickory, North Carolina. And um, he's got this amazing team. But they did this whole gray color that you see. Because when we, when we built our house, we had like an original, like kind of a taupe, you know, purpose gray that everyone was doing. And we were like, eh, we want to go a little more with the contrast. So our painters were here all day. They'll be here tomorrow. They'll be here this weekend. Painting the downstairs um, with that additional wall that we just literally had built and um, getting it all finished, I'm so excited. But in the meantime, this is what we're doing right now. We are sewing um, a shirt to make it one size smaller. So literally all I did was on the sewing machine, I went ahead and created the bobbin that I needed and the thread color that I needed. And it looks like my thread might have slipped somewhere. So I might have to redo this, which is fine because I'll show you how I do it anyway. So the thing that can get frustrating on a sewing machine is your bobbin might slip, it might pull, it might snag, and then you gotta start all over again. But the beautiful thing with a sewing machine is that it goes so fast in every other aspect. Like you would never be able to do this by hand. Hold on one second. Okay, that's a, that's a pin cushion. Logan wants to know what my little tomato pin cushion is. Um, that's a pin cushion. You put, so when you're, you're measuring, come on, you little sucker, come on, come on. Of course, I don't have my glasses on because my eyes have been itching nonstop from these allergies. Thank you, Carolina Blue Ridge Mountains. So, when you create your bobbin, you put it into a little bobbin holder. And you pop it back into your machine. Don't touch the thing, baby. Go in there, please. Logan, please. Logan. Please don't touch that, baby. So you just you pop your bottom back in place, and then you hold your thread, you spin your reel, and of course it's snagging on me right now. So 
I'm gonna take it out and start over because if it's if it doesn't go smooth, something's wrong. Never force your sewing machine. Always be really, really gentle and fragile with it. Um, so if something's snagging, it should never snag. So if it's flowing freely like that, you either don't have your bobbin placed correctly. Maybe I need to put my glasses on because something's not going right. Okay, click. That's the sound we wanted. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab the top thread again, which I have ran through, run through, ran through. Okay, there we go. Smooth as can be. Okay, so now my bobbin and my thread are on the top level, which we want it to be, and we're gonna just place it behind. And we're gonna close our little trap door. And because my dining table that I sew on is a twin slab, natural wood dining table. It's not so even. Uh, might be a little hard to get that back in, but we got it. So, okay, so this is the shirt. She's a really cute, like, black crepe material shirt. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take from where the arm is to the side. I know that I need to take it in about like half a thumb's length. So all I'm gonna do is find the inseam of this shirt. It's really simple. Um, so this is the inseam, right? We all know it has like that raw edging. Apologize for my voice. So we know it has like that raw edging, right? So I'm gonna take about half my thumb length because this is a flowy top and it's not one that has to be fitted. It's an easier one to work with. So I'm just gonna slide it from literally under the armpit where the arm meets the side. And I'm going to go about that thumb length in. I'm gonna drop my foot down. I'm gonna drop the needle down with my hand crank and I'm just gonna let it rip. And you wanna keep an eye on that thread that's coming from the top because if it pops, then stop immediately because you're gonna have to start all over. You're gonna have to re-thread your thread. You're gonna have to grab the bobbin again and whatnot. So it's usually best to start because you wanna gauge what your tension is on your needle. So I stop usually just to check it. Okay, we're still good. So I also wanna make sure that the bottom is still aligned so that we don't have a <laughs> offset edge at the bottom of the shirt. Now I can just keep it going. And usually if the bobbin or the thread or something pops, you'll hear it kind of snap and you know to stop. So we're gonna keep going with it. So far, so good. Okay, so we finished our first side. So you're gonna lift your foot and you're gonna you're gonna pull, but if it gives it a little bit of tension, you're gonna maneuver the hand crank on the side. And then just go ahead. Most sewing machines have a little self trimmer on the back. So right now I just took in the side of her shirt about half an inch. So I'm gonna flip it and I'm gonna do the same. And because this shirt has a balloon sleeve, it's not supposed to be tight. It's supposed to have that flowy, boho chic, cute look to it. It's just sometimes those tops, if they are a little too wide, it doesn't, it's not flattering. So that's what we're doing. We're making the shirt flattering is what we're doing right now. So. Um, I'm gonna just flip it and I'm gonna go raise my needle to the point that it needs to be. Drop my foot down, lower my needle with the hand crank on the side and I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the other side. My bobbin and my thread are still good so we're gonna keep ripping this on the same machine. check the bottom to make sure that my hem on the bottom is still aligned, which it is, and just keep going. Looks like we're solid. Okay, so adjust my side crank, go on my self trimmer. So I literally just took this shirt down about two sizes, which is what it needed to get taken down to. So 
I'm gonna go and pause and have my mom try it on and we will see if it needs any alterations or adjustments, which I think we're good, but if we do need to make minor adjustments, um, I'll let you know what we do, but we should be pretty good. And honestly, this Adrian Papel shirt is so cute and such a steal from Marshalls that for six bucks, it's like, even if it was used as just like a beach cover up, it would have been adorable, but um, it will be paired with probably white skinny jeans or like a black ponte pant. You could do it with a riding boot in the fall, or you could do it with like a cute little like Tory sandal or a ballet flat. Um, all of which will take you from season to season. And that's why when we find deals like this, we grab them because we can always alter them at home. So that's what we have. And um, I will switch to a whole nother video to show you how I'm gonna make some Euro shams. Cause Euro shams are such an odd size to find that um, they end up being really expensive. So the fact that I found these two yards of fabric, which is like a pre-cut fabric from Walmart, um, for $4, I'll be able to make two Euro shams from this. It's a really cool fabric. You see, that's kind of like a waffle print. Um, and I'm putting it on a white pillow anyway. So it'll be kind of like a, a it'll have depth and texture and whatnot. So, okay, I'll get back with you guys and let you know if we have to make minor alterations on this top. I don't think we will have to. And um, the next video will be about our custom-made Euro shams that we will pretty much make for like $4 as opposed to $40. So I'll let you know how that turns out.